Uh, yo, what's up? My name is Stephen Hopkins. I'm a singer, songwriter, uh, and a rapper, occasional producer, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, the song I'm going to be deconstructing today is a song called Guluva's Prayer. Um, made the song like last year, so I was kind of like in the middle of a freestyle series I was doing. It's called Future Quieter Freestyles. I did like volume one before Guluva's Prayer came out and then volume two, that's the one that came with like Guluva's Prayer and Four Ways Boulevard. I just wanted to make like a series of a bunch of songs where I'm just like rapping, like there's no real like melodic intent behind it or anything. I just wanted to make like a bunch of hot beats and just like rap over them and just like talk about like whatever I was going through at the time or whatever was on my mind. Gulova's Prayer happened to be one of those songs. It's actually one of my favorite songs. Um, I had that beat for a while. Like I had that beat for, I had made it probably like six months before I recorded it. It kind of fit like my sonic framework of what I was on at the time. And then one day I just like kind of pulled it up and saw what came up and like, I just liked the way it was written. I liked the way it was put together. I think like I wrote it like a prayer, which I think is like a really cool way to frame like a rap song. Like you can say but like a bunch of cool dope ass shit, but in the framework, of a prayer it's kind of like you're talking to god kind of like a confessional song but it's also like a an anthem for like the homies do you know what i mean that's the thinking and the logic behind the song pretty much yeah this is also like one of my favorite songs to like perform live because you can kind of interact with the crowd like they get to say amen a lot in the first eight bars like they're saying like amen after every single bar and it kind of builds up and it's like a cool moment for the crowd and like get them involved and stuff so the first bar is uh look give me swagger and infinite patience amen for my ops may we elevate Amen. Leave my niggas not into temptation. Amen. My mistakes may they never make. Amen. So uh, pretty much over there, it's kind of like it's my iteration of like our father, the Lord's Prayer. But like it's like the cooler, much more street version of it. And I'm kind of like, you know, saying what up, God, I'm here. Feel me and my niggas. Do you know what I mean? Then we get into the story. So it goes, I'm clubbing hard in the year 2060. Amen. It's 2 a.m. and she's trying to convince me. Amen. Presidential, the sweet at Da Vinci. Yeah. And I wouldn't mind some Monica Lewinsky. So that bar is like, I was clubbing a lot in 2016. And I'm pretty much telling a story about how I was like texting some hun. And at 2 a.m. she like called me. And we were at the club. We were at a club called, um, it was before it was called Onyx. Uh, what the hell was it called? I think it was called VIP. And she was like at the Da Vinci, which is not far from there. And I kind of left the club to go see her. And it's kind of like painting a picture of like kind of how reckless my life was at that like point in time. Presidential, the sweet outfit. I thought it was a cool play of words, like presidential, the sweet at Da Vinci, and I wouldn't want mine some Monica Lewinsky, Monica Lewinsky, presidential, Bill Clinton, cool double entendre, Tondra, not Tondra, cool double entendre, whore. and I wouldn't mind some Monica Lewinsky in the band seat. I can never get enough. Fagugezi, got the game to the T. Come and test me, G O A to the T. When you address me, ain't it sexy? It's just like some stuntastic, cool ass lyrics. Like there's nothing really deep about that right there. I just thought like it just fit the flow so well it fit the cadence so well i was like oh this is a cool ass like string of bars this is nothing really deep i've already told the story and given the context to like the kind of person i was at the time 100 killers chilling in the cut 100 trees swimming in my lungs got my guys i don't pay for their loyalty product safe couple k for the loyal fee so that one is like 100 killers is not necessarily saying my friends are killers it's just kind of like how we speak to each other like yo what up killer it's like kind of like street slang and uh, 100 trees swimming in my lungs. I thought that was the coolest way to say I'm smoking weed. Like, I, th I thought like that was like a, a dope ass way. Like I always find cool ways to say like regular shit. I think like that's the key to like, I think being a good rapper to make your everyday like believable shit sound like it's the coolest thing of ever in life. All my favorite rappers can do that. Like. Kendrick does that so well. This guy was talking about being 17 in Compton, walking down the street and like, you know, seeing his friends do like normal gangster Compton shit. But the way he paints the picture makes it sound so cool. Got my guys, I don't pay for their loyalty, product safe, couple K for the lawyer fee. Kids, pay your lawyers. I'm telling you, it's gonna save your life. If you're like an artist, you're a creative, you're whatever, make sure your lawyers are paid because they're gonna make sure you keep getting paid and they're gonna protect your interests. So yeah, it was, it's just like a story about like, just guard your interests. Like before you buy the grills, make sure 
sure the admin is right, make sure the lawyers are paid, or else ain't gonna be no more money for no grills if you don't pay for the lawyers. You heard you wanna buy the wave, I'm Shanam. You wanna be me, ain't no way, I'm Shanam. The swag layer, you would pay for I'm Shanam. Marasfan, let me say, I'm Shanam. So that sub isn't even about rappers. I, I was like really like mad at brands and agencies at the time because like we'd pitch ideas and then like you see your exact same pitch being executed like less swag you know like oh you guys are trying to buy the wave from someone else when i mean like you could have just came to us and we could have done this thing properly but you guys chose to do it that way i don't know why you would do that but like that's what like what's happening at the time yeah some of my bars aren't even like directed at specific people as organizations powers that be power structures kind of people because i feel like it's it's it just makes sense to in a rap like to just punch up instead of punch down and those are the people i feel like have like the power so it's kind of nice to direct like bars to them so like it was just like a, another like look into like lifestyle like we would be at the club like really drunk and then like someone would play like joyous celebration or like though i'm not good enough he still and like we'd be like naked and it's a sunday and you're at the club and you're like wow we are really playing this jesus music while like drinking alcohol at the club it's kind of crazy next bar is the flow 33 celsius i'm fly as 33 celtic so that's um 33 celtics is larry bird his back of his jersey said bird um, just clever play on words. Larry Bird flyers 33 South. It's a very simple bar. But if I let your girl tell this, that's when it really get embarrassing. Versus got a cinematic feel. We need the status international. I'm acting wild at this event again. Good thing I'm cozy with the management. So that's like, um, you know, like when you're like in your kind of comfortable space, you're like at a party where you just know everyone, you know, the guy, the bouncer at the door, you can like wild out as much as you want because you know no one's going to do anything to you. It kind of like makes you more free when you're grooving like it's very different when you're like in Cape Town or you're like in Durban and you're like you don't really know anyone you have to be in your best behavior but like when you're in your city you just like you're in your element you're in your vibe it's like it's, it's a good time like the song is, is pretty much about like that type of energy following bars are windows down middle finger sticking out grand arrival take shots till the morning and the month why is Pete's California should make it bust if we play oh I think she liked me so that bar pretty much it's like another like kind of stuntastic cool less rap cadence like catering to the cadence catering to the mood it's just the beat was just so laid back and in the cut i just wanted to say like a bunch of like really really dope cool shit do you know what i mean and also like use our like lingo while i did that like why is Pilis california when you tell someone oh Pilis california like you live in like some like hollywood shit right now it doesn't even you don't even have to be doing like the craziest shit you could be like at a party with like your friends and just like having a good time dressed really fine someone like i think is California, you know. It's like our slang, and I think it's important to like for us to use our like slang and how we speak in our rhymes. You know what I mean? She'll make it bust if we playing. Ooh, I think she like me. Why is niggas acting extra light skin? Uh, wanna see me wild? Now you sightseeing. Uh, fuck out of my way so politely. I wish you Godspeed. And then like that's like the the end of the verse pretty much. And uh yeah, like why is niggas acting, acting extra light skin? No knock to all my light skinned brothers. I I did kind of take advantage of that moment. You guys caught a stray over there. My bad. I still love you guys though, but people do be acting light skinned. So I, I I did feel that one day I'm gonna have to address that in a song. And like I got the opportunity to do that because I don't know, it just fit, man. Like sometimes you just say like cool stuff in a song because it just fit the pocket and the cadence and you have to like cater to it. It was like one of those moments as well yeah there was not much to like those last string of bars really and then like the chorus i just put at the end it only comes one time but i interpolated like tebe's melody from groover's prayer the song's called kuluva's prayer um so it goes teachers told me i would not amount to nothing i got faith and favor i'm too young to die yet and then it just repeats twice and i, I kind of like wanted to end off such an asshole verse with like a nice inspirational message as a juxtapose like right at the end to kind of give the song balance because i mean your song just can't be about like saying cool shit like you gotta like leave something for people to like walk away with and take some modicum of inspiration from some kind of positivity from i try to do that with like almost all my songs where like i'll say a bunch of like you know stuntastic like cool rap stuff but like the subtext is always positive and it's always trying to leave people better than they found them like leave a better impression on people i think that's like the aim of mu certainly of my music
Um, and I feel like that idea came across like really well in that song. And if anybody wanted to understand kind of like what I stand for, like musically and sonically and a, a hip hop person, a person who loves the genre and the culture, um, I think that would be like a, a good song to like reference just to like get into my music. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that's pretty much the, the entire song. Once again, my name is Stephen of Kent and that was the deconstruction of Guluva's Prayer out now on all digital platforms and the video is out on youtube we did like the visual with mz last year sometime um i hope you guys enjoyed and i hope you guys are gonna bump the song uh i'm out